Welcome back to the vlog. As you can see, me and Zeus are enjoying a nice uh, day in our backyard. Um, today's session is more of a compilation of some uh, sessions that didn't have enough interesting hands to make a complete vlog out of. So I combined a few together to make this one because they were some interesting hands that happened, but uh, not a hell of a lot. So we got about one or two hands from each day and uh, here they are. Also, just want to mention that we are, we, I have produced some merchandise with Zeus like liking likeness, and uh, so they're they're poker chips, and they have a picture of Zeus, and it says, "What would Zeus do?" And I've been using them as card protectors, and uh, it really helps. Uh, every time I go to look at my hand or play my hand, I uh, look at that chip and I think, okay. Forget it the way I play it, because, you know, sometimes I play like a donkey. I'm going to be uh, thinking more like uh, like Zeus and see what Zeus would do. Sit back, relax, enjoy. Here it comes. First interesting hand, open for a raise 215 with ace jack suited. I get a caller from the cutoff and one from the button. Both blinds end up folding and we go three ways to a flop with 49 in. The flop is 647 with two hearts. So, nut flush draw, two over cards. Yeah, we're going to be C betting this for sure. Bet out 20. And the both players end up putting in the call. This definitely hits their range, but with my nut flush draw and two overs, I have plenty of equity. Looking for a good turn card, and that's exactly what I do not get. It's a six of diamonds. Puts up the back door uh, flush draw and diamonds. At this point, I decided to bet 35 which is a in-betweener bet. I really didn't want to check it and I really didn't want to bet big. I thought I could just name my own price for my draw. And uh, I get one caller from the player in the cutoff and then the player on the button goes into the tank for a while. And uh, I'm beginning to start to worry thinking that I just stepped in it. And he ends up raising a min raise. I really don't like that turn bet. It doesn't really accomplish anything. If someone has a drawing hand, they're going to come along with you, and it kind of invites someone to make a play at you. If you're going to bet the turn, you're going to have to bet it big, or you can just check it and see what happens. But leading out small, I really don't like it at all. Yeah, he goes to 70. So I really don't know what exactly his hand is that he would do this with. Could he be overplaying something? Or does he have a hand like 5-6 suited? Or maybe 7-6 and he was slow playing. Maybe he flopped a set. I have no idea. Only thing I know is my range is completely capped. And his is, well, definitely hitting the range of the cards that are on the board. I have way too much equity to fold. So I'm just going to have to, you know, plug my nose and put in the call. I actually thought maybe I should just re-raise this. Maybe he's doing this really light because, I mean, this is like a really weak uh, min raise. You know, I don't know this player. Not sure what the, what's going on. But I put in the call, hoping to realize my equity. The other player thinks for a while before folding out. And we're going to go see a river heads up with $284 in the pot. And I have absolutely no idea what my opponent has and I don't know whether if I catch an ace or a jack whether it's good I'm hoping if I catch a heart it's good the river card comes as a king of spades uh, I've thought moment for a moment maybe I should bluff this but I just check it and give up he checks it back which kind of surprised me and I roll over my hand and he shows pocket nines few hands after that ace jack suited hand I looked down at ace queen in the small blind there was a six dollar straddle and we get two callers, one from late position and one from the button. This is a perfect time to exercise my betting arm and I raise to 31. 
looking to thin the field or build a pot. It, I didn't thin the field that much because everybody called, but I did happen to build a pot. So we're going to go four ways to a flop with 132 in the center. And the flop is pretty good. It's ace, nine, six, rainbow. So a pair of aces is really strong. Not too many draws other than seven, eight out there. So if I get any action, it's probably going to be from another ace. I bet out 75. At this bet size, I should only be getting action from an ace with a weaker kicker because ace-king would have raised preflop. So unless they hit a hand like ace-9 or ace-6, I think I'm golden. And uh, I kind of want one or maybe two players to come along. But if not, I'll be happy. The first player folds, second one goes pretty quick. And then the third player on the button just jams this whole stack in, which he started out with about $200. It's only 90 more to me. If he has a hand like pocket sixes or pocket nines, he's going to get paid off. Or ace nine, ace six. There's a chance he has a hand like seven, eight suited and is just trying to get some fold equity. I'm going to put in the call. He could even have ace jack. Run out comes clean. He says he missed. I think he had the straight draw. And we take this one down. The player under the gun limps and I decided to raise with 10, eight suited. Hoping, hoping to isolate him, but you know, it was just way too small. I should make it at least $20. I made it 15 and that just invited everybody to come call. So we're going to go six ways to a flop with 90 in the pot. And the flop is ace three deuce with the three deuce of spades. So we flop a flush draw, not, nothing much else. First player in the blind checks, the under the gun player now leads for $20, which is a very small bet. And he usually does this with hands like a weak ace. So if he has a hand like ace seven, ace eight, something like that, this is a telling sign. He's kind of like testing the water, seeing if I would raise. I put in the call and so does one other player. So we go three ways to a turn and the turn is a king of diamonds. Again, the person under the gun leads out for another small bet, this time for 25. So with this bet, I'm putting him on a weak ace. And the best way to play against this kind of player is to really put him to the test because he's already afraid I have him out kicked. So let's make it really look like it. So I decided to raise to 70. I really like your raise there, but I don't like your sizing. It's way too small. If you're going to raise, you got to make it bigger. You're going to be calling off anyway if he jams. So might as well get the money in now while you have some fold equity. Anyway, good job on the raise. Just make it bigger next time. The other player ends up folding out and it's back around to the initial better. He shows me that he has a ace. He throws it in face up and he flashed that he had a 10 behind it. We just lost a big hand and now we have the button. There's an open for 13 from the under the gun player. It's folded around to the person in the cutoff who puts in the call for the 13. And we look down at two aces. What a beautiful sight, especially after losing the last hand. I put in a three bet to 35. I'm looking to get some action, hoping these players will double me up. Again, your raise size was too small. $35 just isn't enough when you have two people interested in the pot and they already put in $13 a piece. You really need to raise, say, $50 to $60. Put the pressure on them. Make them think that you don't have a hand or are trying to steal it. Get some action that way. The uh, first player who opened puts in the call, and now the cutoff decides to re-raise to 150. I decided just to put in the call, so hopefully to get an overcall from the initial raiser. The initial raiser thinks for a moment and then folds his hand, and so we're going to go heads up to a flop. I only have like 40 something dollars left. He checks quickly, I shove, he snap calls, and I show him the aces. He never showed me his hand, but the other player who folded had pocket nines. So got a little lucky on this one. So I'm on the button with Queen Jack suited. We have one player who limped in from uh, under the gun and everyone else folded. So I raised to 15. I get a call from the small blind and call from the player who limped under the gun. And we're going three ways to a flop with 48 in. Flop is King Jack six with one club, the king of clubs, and it gets checked to me. I decided to see bet for 20 here. This is a hand that you could check back, but I want to keep the aggression factor up. If I have any doubt on what to do, 
my go-to thing is to bet. So I bet for 20. I don't think a bet is a mistake, but I think I would prefer a check back in that position. You're not really afraid of too many overcards hitting. If you get action, it's from a hand like someone with a king or with a straight draw. I think by checking it back, not only do you get value out of all those weaker hands that might take a stab at the pot, but you'll get called down lighter with someone with a hand like jack-10 or jack-9. So I think I prefer a check back in that position. The small blind, who's a very conservative player, looks at his cards and decides on a call for the 20. And then the under-the-gun player instantly raises to 50. A little bit bigger than a min raise. And I've played with this player quite a bit, and I know he wouldn't be doing this with anything less than two pair. Since the player in the small blind, I put on a pair of kings. I'm thinking the chance of him having king jack, because I have a jack, is pretty slim. So my feeling is he had pocket sixes. So I ended up putting in the fold, even though it was only 30 more for me to call. Turn card comes as a seven of clubs. I decided to keep the camera rolling here. Small blind checks. Under the gun player bets 80 now. He only has like another 50 or $60 behind. And now the small blind decides on a jam. So he puts the other player all in. And the other player, you know, was more than happy to call him down. And we get to see what the run out would have been. I'm pretty sure the under the gun player has sixes and the uh, small blind has a hand like ace king, maybe king queen, maybe even king jack. River card comes as a five of clubs, so we would have made our flush. This battle on this hand and we get three limpers in front of us. So I normally don't like limping. But with Jack Eight of Diamonds, I think this plays good as a limp. It has a lot of draw possibilities. So we limp behind. We go five ways to a flop of Ace, Queen, Deuce with two diamonds. Let's check to the person on our right who bets out 16. They only have about $50 behind. I put in the call for 16, hoping to get some overcalls to make my flush draw worthwhile. Everyone else ends up folding, and we see a turn card of a Nine of Spades. So not the greatest card in the world. It does give us a gut shot. If he has any kind of ace, he should be jamming, but he checks it. So I'm putting him on a flush draw also. Five of diamonds hits and he couldn't get the money in fast enough. Uh, with a jack high flush, I don't think he has an ace because he would have bet that. And so the only thing that beats me is a king high flush. So I put in the call and he shows nine, 10 of diamonds. I'm in the big blind with King 10 of spades and there was a $6 straddle. Everybody called, so I completed from the big blind. Flop comes 10, 6, 3 with one spade. I check it and the player on the button puts in a bet for $16. I decided to play this one cautiously just because we had seven players seeing the flop. Anyone could have just about anything. I put in the call for the 16 and everybody else ends up folding. So we're going to go heads up to a turn which is the nine of spades. So we pick up a flush draw along with our top pair. I check it and he quickly checks it back. I'm thinking I'm good here most of the time. Four clubs comes on the river. I was really hoping for a spade, but I'm going for some thin value with a $25 bet. And he thinks for just a little bit before putting in the call. I turn over my hand expecting it to be good. And uh, he looks at it slowly and then turns over 10 six of diamonds for a flop two pair. The action in the game has really started to dry up. Someone made it a six to go and I raised with ace king. Everyone folds. Later on, there's a six dollar straddle. Someone limps in for the six. I raise with two kings. Everybody folds. I decided to quit after that. Decided to go home and uh, play around with my new Zeus poker chips. If you guys were curious why my nickname is Magic, uh, here's a small example. Thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate your support. If you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please do so. It really does help out the channel, and we'll see you next time. Thanks again.